Hello everybody, welcome back to Best Books Ever. I am Tyler, and today we are continuing in the Percy Jackson series. Uh, we're starting book two, uh, Sea of Monsters. Sea of Monsters, right? Chapters one through ten. Uh, first half of the book, just like we did with the Lightning Thief. So, uh, a lot of stuff here, man. I am very excited uh, to get into this. Um, obviously very excited to finish the book, finish the series, you know, if we want to talk long term, but uh, enjoying this a lot more than I thought I would. I already thought I would enjoy it to some degree, but uh, these are these are good books, man. These are these are very, very well written um, and all that. So um, as always, we start with the end, right? We start with the end because that's always the most exciting. So um, the very, 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 very end uh, kind of the last thing that happens is that Clarice does save Percy and Annabeth, uh, just them two, right? Yeah. Uh, from the Hydra, right? We have the Hydra, crazy stuff, right? Uh, chopping off the heads, even I knew that. You chop off a head of a Hydra, two more sprout out, all that stuff. Very dumb thing for Percy to do to cut off one of the heads, but, you know, he... Percy is a very interesting case because he's like, he's supposed to be... Presumably the most important half blood on the planet, right? You would, you know, you'd figure. Um, I mean, he's the only one. I mean, that we know, I guess, but the only one that uh, is the uh, uh, child can think lower child uh, of one of the big three. I mean, Tyson technically there too, but tyson we don't really get too much into in this book we have a lot it's it's, it's it's very front heavy but even that we don't really get into his character too much i hope we get into his character further uh you know in the second half of the book obviously i have already read this um but even so like i don't i don't remember <laughs> i really like he could die in this book and i wouldn't like i wouldn't even know like you know i i, I really don't remember um but yeah so kind of put him to the side a little bit, but Percy, you know, the, the, you know, seemingly the most important half-blood to exist currently, and he knows a lot of the Greek mythology stuff, but not really, again, he's, he wasn't, uh, surrounded by it as much as Annabeth was, right, Annabeth came to camp when she was only seven, and so for however long, right, so it's about probably, is she older than Percy? Percy's like 13 or 14, right? So I know at the very least she's the same age. I, I think she's like a year or two older than him though, right? Isn't that, isn't that true? At the very least, she spent like seven years here. You know what I mean? So she spent all that time, uh, you know, learning all this stuff. So it is very funny to see again, like on paper, him be more important, which you would think that that would mean that he's more, uh, you know, more, like, well-versed in all this Greek mythology stuff, and you can just see the moment of, like, him mid-swing, and Annabeth just like, no, <laughs> don't do it, um, but, you know, so, but anyway, uh, Clarice does save them, Clarice comes at the, end, at the very end, it's funny the way they kind of set that up, like, you know, you know, them, like, coming in, because they don't say Clarice immediately, and I'm, and they're like, oh, it, I, you know, I was like, oh, I, I remember that voice, that means that we have enemies on both sides. Now, obviously, talk about the Hydra, and then whoever the voice was before Percy realized it was Clarice, before the reader knew it was Clarice. Um, I thought it was going to be like Ares or something. I was like, Ares is coming to save the day? That seems wrong. You know, I don't think Ares is going to help again. Like, I I can't imagine Ares helping ever again. Like, even, even in his mind, if it is, like, for his own benefit. Like, I, you know, I feel like what went down in the last book was the line in the sand, was like, that's it, you know, because even in the first book, he wasn't really helping Percy, he was stringing him along the whole time, it was for his own benefit, but on the outside, I mean, it seemed like he was helping him, I, I don't think either side would allow that now, I don't think Ares would allow himself to help Percy, unless Kronos was like, yo, you gotta do it, but even that, it's like, situation's gonna be very different now, it's, it's very much gonna be like, desperation on both sides right like i can't imagine aries would go for percy would, would, would you know would go to percy for help percy would just be like yeah okay he'd be like i'm going to kill you <laughs> you 
you are a god and i'm gonna find a way to end you um so yeah i don't think that would happen but then other than that i was like who who else could be helping and then turns to be clarice um this is very interesting because it kind of goes into like you know predictions for the rest of the book obviously the, the, the next chapter chapter 11 i'm sure we're going to immediately get into it um i sort of hate that that clarice is here i mean obviously she was the one who was given the quest um so it is her right to do it you know they didn't like drop it off or anything because uh you know percy annabeth and tyson oh yeah tyson is there oh, i forgot about that yeah, yeah, Ty yeah tyson's there too um you know, because they left, like, the quest is still going on, because that is presumably their, their only chance, not only their best chance, but their only chance of saving the camp, um, but I just hate that she's there, because, you know, going back now, now we're not at the end anymore, we're now, like, in the middle-ish of our little section here, um, Tantalus, I think is his name, he's awful, he's the worst, like, you know, we thought Mr. D was bad. He was tolerable. And at least I feel like his demeanor was very just defeated and just like, I don't care about these kids. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in charge of the camp as a punishment or whatever. But it, it, it still felt like he he could restrain himself, you know. Um, Tantalus, on the other hand, he just like outwardly doesn't care. And, you know, I feel like again, very outwardly, very aggressively, doesn't care about the kids, doesn't care about the camp, you know, him saying, oh, the camp will be fine, it's like the camp is literally dying before your very eyes, like, the tree dying, monsters coming in left and right, we got border patrol, you know, that, you know, that tried to take out two mechanical bulls, right, uh, the birds came in, almost just pecked everyone's eyes out, right, and then him saying, oh, we don't need border patrol. We're, 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 we're going to worry about the, the, the chariot race and all that stuff. It's like, what do you, what? Like, even, again, him and Mr. D, a very bad combination. But just Mr. D by himself, I don't think would have this energy. Like, if he was by himself, and let's just say Chiron still wasn't there, you know, they're, they're, they're there just wasn't like a like games director or whatever. It was just Mr. D in charge of everything, right? I don't think he would be saying these things. I don't think he would all of a sudden bring up the cherry race. I don't think he would say, Oh no, the camp's fine. You know, like like it's 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 tantalous that's saying all these things and Mr. D just doesn't care enough to stop him, I guess, or like whatever, he's too busy or you know, you know, whatever, it's just his personality. But like Tantalus is 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 you know, aside from the disease that's actually killing the tree, he is the disease in this camp, and I really hope they get rid of him, because <laughs> he is, he's bad news, you know, um, yeah, but then, again, circling back around to the whole him giving Clarice the quest is, like, it doesn't make it, like, I'm not mad Clarice has a quest, I think she seems very capable, right, um, you know, you know, even though she is, you know, on the opposing side of Percy and Annabeth most times, and, uh, you know, being sort of like the queen, I guess, of Aria's house makes her aggressive and sort of unpredictable and whatever. Um, I think she's a camper just like everyone else is a camper. Um, and so her getting a quest is not like the worst thing in the world. I think this quest in particular, though, doesn't make any sense. Like, with the context of it's Percy and Annabeth, like them kind of two going back and forth. They're the ones who figured out this idea. They're the ones who even like kind of brought this quest to them. It's connected to them. Like Grover's the one that's trapped. You know, it's 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 their friend. Like it's it's because of Grover and Percy's uh connection, uh, you know, also their emotional or mind connection, which we'll talk about in a second, um, that even allowed them to understand what's happening and the golden fleece even possibly existing there because i don't know oh, i almost dropped my water <laughs> knocked my water over everything um i don't i don't remember if grover actually has seen the golden fleece or if that's just like the legend well i mean he didn't say golden fleece but i feel like everything like context clues we know it's there 
anyway, it's just like, it's that classic scenario, which happens in real life, but also happens a lot in, in stories where it's like one person, you know, the hero, the protagonist, whatever, has this plan, this game plan to win. And then someone else comes in and swoops and takes credit again. Um, uh, some props, I guess, to Clarice. She didn't just like barge her way into the quest. She didn't hear that a quest was happening, and then she was like, "Well, I, well, I should spearhead this quest." Tantalus came in and was like, "Well, well, Clarice is the winner of the chariot race, so she gets it." And even when he said that, Clarice at first seemed kind of uneasy. Again, I, I, I don't know what that was. I don't know if it was just her being surprised. Or maybe there is some humanity in her and there was like a, a split second of her being like, oh, well, I'm not like her mind thinking, oh, well, I'm not like this isn't mine. Like, I'm not the one who decided this. Like, why am I doing it? Maybe not. Maybe I'm giving her too much credit. But um, yeah, it just I don't know. It just it just sits wrong with me. But now we're here. Um, it's interesting because going into what might happen in in the, the rest of the book, right, chapters uh, 11 through 20, which is what we're covering next week, um, I'm interested to see how this plays out, because again, I've read the book, I technically do know everything that happens, I don't remember though, so I am trying to remember, but also just kind of basing it off of the first 10 chapters of like, what happens in the next chapter even, like chapter 11, where Clarice just saved them, right, a lot of gloating I'm sure is going to happen, um, I don't think that's particularly fair, <laughs> you know, she was able to prepare properly for the quest, uh, because they had to run away, um, but, you know, well, whatever, what happens now, like, do they join together, or are they going to become one big group now, because you imagine quest or three people, right, it's the person who's given the quest, and they can bring two people along, so right now we got Percy, Annabeth, and Tyson, not, um, not intentional trio because again they weren't actually given the quest so it could have been anyone that went it could have been any number of people um but with clarice you mentioned she does have two people probably two people from aries house two people we haven't really heard of before um that'd be my guess anyway i don't know that we get any more named character maybe maybe, maybe we do that i mean because there was a point to introduce the one character um that actually kind of liked Tyson I forget what his name was but I think he was part of does Hephaestus have his own house because I think he was part of that house me or, or cabin um the one that uh you know like builds stuff so so maybe he's there and, and you know maybe he's the reason why they have like crazy like firepower um which could make sense um you know because again they did you know, Rick Riordan did make it a point to, like, introduce them as a character, um, but, but maybe I'm thinking too much into it, maybe there's just two other Aries House people, which would also track with Clarice, and, um, how I imagine her character would be able to go, well, we're the best, so I'm gonna take my two right-hand, uh, people and bring them along, so, but anyway, like, so do they just become a group of six now, um, if so, like, who initiates that, who was like, oh, we should, we should team up, um, or does Clarice do the quote unquote honorable thing as she sees it aligning with the camp and with Tantalus or whatever and says, you guys shouldn't be here. We're going to take you in or something, you know, we're going to take you in. But well, I guess even that would make a lot of sense. I mean, I guess just them saying we're going to like, I don't know, restrain you, <laughs> you know, because them saying we're going to bring you all the way back wasting way too much time we're gonna bring you back to camp half blood and then set out again on our quest too much time um maybe like restraint like, like chaining them up or something and like shackles <laughs> you know um might be what her thing is but i would like to think that that doesn't have i like to think that they don't have too much friction like i'm sure it'll start off with some friction but then someone maybe annabeth or whatever would just be like hey we don't like each other very much, okay? <laughs> we know this. We don't have to dance this dance. We, I don't, we don't like you. You don't like us. But us together, it's a bigger group. It'll help us out. Maybe even Annabeth, Percy, whatever, will kind of uh, give up 
the like leadership role to Clarice just to make her happy. Just be like, you know what? You can call the shots. We'll follow you. But I think that we should team up or whatever, you know. Um, what does something like that happen? It's six people going against this thing again. Very dangerous, right? Um, being monsters, aka Bermuda Triangle, like not going to be an easy time. So I think the more people, the better. Um, so yeah, hope that happens. Um, let's see. We already talked about a bunch of my things, so we'll just have to cross out some stuff. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Um, another thing I want to mention, uh, I, I, I teased it before the, the whole like mental, emotional connection thing with Grover and Percy. Um, that's interesting to me because they, they, um, established this rule that's like, Grover didn't come out and say it explicitly, but he basically said that if I die, you die. <laughs> um, tough stuff. Now, just from a writing perspective, again, we're kind of breaking the fourth wall here. Um, there's three more books, you know, I mean, actually there's, there's technically more than that, but the original Percy Jackson series was five books. So it, it would be strange <laughs> if Grover and then Percy were to die in the second book of the Percy Jackson five book series. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I know that kind of takes the fun out of it and, um, you're like, well, we know Percy never dies. It's like, well, not necessarily. I don't want to go there. I don't want to say things that are completely untrue or, um, you know, but book two is a little early, I would say. Although that, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that nothing bad could happen to them, either one of them or both of them. Um, I do think that is like a big thing to introduce though. Uh, I don't know if it'll ever happen again, if anyone else will make any mental connections. Um, but yeah, I did like that, where it was like, Grover establishes, like, just the trust that Grover must have in Percy, um, you know, because I imagine that's not a, a, a light thing to do, you don't just establish this connection with anyone, right, As, you know, especially with the whole, if I die, you die thing, um, so I, I love that from just a, a relationship building perspective, um, and then also, yeah, it does add some 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 danger to it all. Uh, not only with you know, I, I I mean I feel like with the whole <laughs> Grover's my best friend, got to save him. That's enough. But then also adding, oh, if something does happen to him, you also die. Self preservation is 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 a very powerful thing. Um, you know, as much as people, especially heroes, protagonists, want to be selfless everyone's a little selfish, you know, especially when it comes to your own life, so, uh, that was kind of a neat thing to introduce, I wonder if it'll ever come back around, you know, um, um, another, well, we're talking about relationship building, um, small thing, I do like towards the beginning of the, of the book where Percy is obviously reminiscing about his friends, about his time at Camp Half-Blood, Grover, Chiron, Annabeth, all that stuff, right? He's la He lasted almost a year, not having any sort of uh, bad stuff happen. I think it was actually his last day, wasn't it, <laughs> that all this went down? So close. Just a few more hours and we would have been in the clear. Um, but with the whole, like, normal student thing, I liked that. Um, you know, I liked him reminiscing. I liked him, you know, he, he, he does have these two sides, right, where he has his more normal life especially with his mom, which he cherishes, but then with the Half-Blood stuff and with the Half-Blood stuff sort of explaining his life almost, um, he does also very much cherish the the Half-Blood side, the, the camp side with Annabeth, Grover, Chiron, all of them. Um, so I just like that. And then also Annabeth in particular, you know, you know, I'm kind of having, you know, that like photo of them or whatever. Um, I like that relationship sort of softening. And, you know, I feel like it did in the first book anyway. Um, you know, because I feel like those two are the most at odds in the trio where I think I, I think we mentioned this last time, but um, the trio, right? We have Percy and Grover, which have been friends for a while, right? Because they had the whole like real life 
quote unquote real life relationship in school. You have Grover and Annabeth who knew each other from camp, right? So they could have had that built up relationship. Percy and Annabeth didn't really have anything until they first ended up together or, uh, you know, meeting at camp. So that's the relationship that I think has to grow the most out of the three possible. So him already kind of having those feelings towards her and like missing her, even though on the outside they're at odds with each other, right? Um, just biologically with Athena and Poseidon, but um, them even missing them, right, is, is, is nice. Um, yeah, I, I like that. Again, love a good friend group. Uh, a friend group that with every chapter, it seems like they get closer and closer. Uh, yeah, and then I guess another sort of like early book thing to cover is, I already kind of mentioned this, but Poseidon did claim Tyson, which is huge. Um, for a lot of reasons, right? So Tyson being a Cyclops is like taboo or whatever. Um, they're known as like, they like kill humans. They're destructive and whatever, right? Um, so that's big. Uh, I like that relationship though, that like dynamic with Percy because he sort of knows what, that's fe- what, what that feels like to be cast out. Um, to kind of be looked at as a, as this like troublemaker, Right even though nothing for the most part was his fault. And now we have Tyson, Cyclops, who also was just, I was just born this way. Like I haven't, I've never done anything bad, but you all have these like preconceived notions about me. So it it makes sense for him to literally be like an older brother character to him. Um, But then on top of that, there's the whole, uh, we're not supposed to uh, father children, you know, Poseidon, Zeus and Hades. Not only, I mean, he, (laughs) Poseidon not only claimed Percy, uh, about a year ago, uh, but now he's claiming Tyson, so another kid, it's like, what are we, what are rules for at this point, (laughs) why do we even have rules, um, so that's a big thing, um, and yeah, I just wonder how different Tyson's, uh, you know, his, like, experience with being a child of Poseidon will differ from, from Percy's, um, you know, again, I feel like so far we don't know a lot about him, I think that just goes to show him having a, you know, him having a much younger mind, it seems, you know, I think Percy mentioned it before, mentioned how he feels like he, you know, Tyson has, like, the brain of, like, an eight-year-old or something, or, like, ten-year-old or whatever, like, very young kid, uh, you know, which sort of explains how, how like emotional, how quickly he gets emotional. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Um, and then obviously moving forward to them having to, uh, fight and possibly kill a Cyclops to get the golden fleece, you know, see kind of how that works. (laughs) Uh, that's going to be a tough time, I'm sure. Uh, let's see, so we got that, um, and yeah, just, uh, I guess a few more things, um, Hermes, remember, he did give Percy some things, obviously he gave them the, the packs or whatever, but him, specifically, he gave, uh, some vitamins, and he gave a wind thermos, we already saw the wind thermos in action, I don't know if we'll see it in action again, I don't know what it could, what more use it could have, we saw it in action though, it opened a little bit, able to propel their raft to shore great awesome right already useful good stuff the vitamins though he was all he was he was very vague about the vitamins um about like what they did he wasn't you know he didn't say eat them in this situation it was just kind of like to become yourself again or something i don't i don't know what that means you know i would like to think that it's just like health (laughs) it's like oh if you're running out of ambrosia and nectar eat some vitamins you know he wasn't very clear with it, so obviously the vitamins are going to be used. You can't tell me they're not going to be used. You can't just... The protagonist of a book cannot get given two gifts from a god and not use them, especially when one was used. You can't, you can't tell me. So I don't know what they're for, though. I don't know what... Again, like... Kind of like become yourself again or something. I forget the wording he used, but like I don't know what that means. Like, if he's, like, hypnotized or something, like, you know, if he, 
if a monster bites him and he starts becoming, you know, like a werewolf or something. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that means, but we'll see. We'll have to keep an eye out, though, to see what these vitamins are actually used for. And he did say, I think there was like two different kinds. So, I don't know, though. But that's just, just something to note, something to remember going forward. We can't forget these these little details. Um, and then obviously a big thing, Luke, Kronos, on the ship, all that stuff, right? So, us seeing Luke again, very different context, right? Again, for the most, majority of the first book, Luke, great guy. One of the guys that you can put all your trust into. And then the end happened. And now we're in the second book. We're going forward. We can't trust Luke at all. Luke is seemingly sort of like, I guess, sort of, like, well, maybe like the right-hand man to Kronos. I mean, his sarcophagus or his coffin, sarcophagus, it's, it's sort of the same thing, isn't it? Um, is right next to him, so I don't know. I feel like Luke is a pretty important fella in uh, in, in Kronos' scheme. But he's there. Um, I love the way that Rick wrote the Luke character because he's very confident very arrogant with everything, very much like he's that person that believes in their stance on whatever the subject is, and no matter how much you throw at them, whether it's fact or opinion, they're not budging. You know, no matter how much, even how much logic you throw at them, they've already made up their mind. There's nothing you can say to them to change it. So, that's the case with Luke when it comes to the whole Kronos, uh, taking out the gods, building anew, all that stuff. Like, from Percy and Ambe's perspective, this is awful. Like, they're using you, you know. And it's and it's funny for him to be almost a hypocrite in that way. For him to say the gods are using you guys, and then them to say, well, Kronos is using you, and him being like, nah, he's not though. <laughs> Just okay, cool, awesome. I'm glad that you can step outside yourself and look at things objectively. Um, but. Other than that, again, he's he's still just very arrogant with everything. He thinks he's better than everybody. Um, and he is good. He is good. We can't, you know, we can't deny that. But um, I guess we'll just kind of see going forward to see what happens with his character. I mean, if he is, in fact, like the right-hand man to Kronos, we'll see him a lot more. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, worse comes to worse. I don't want to see him dead because I don't, I don't know. I don't know that I hate Luke enough that I think in this, you know, seeming war that is, you know, you know, that is actually brewing to see him dead. Like, I don't know, you know, I mean, because again, he could just be being used the same way that gods have used humans and half-bloods and all that stuff for hundreds of years, thousands of years. I don't know. Um, so how much can you blame him, you know, um, especially when Kronos himself is influencing him uh but you know we'll see we'll see um and then on top of that like i mentioned chronos you know their their plan is to reform him bit by bit don't know how long it's gonna take i don't think they gave us like a time frame on like yes in three months time he will be at his full power or something i don't, I don't think they said that but um that's scary because that was going back to the last book where percy was talking to poseidon and poseidon was like please, Kronos stirs every hundred years, or I forget what he said, he stirs every now and again, but him actually coming back, like, coming out of Tartarus, you know, all that stuff, unheard of, and then Percy being like, yeah, but that's his plan, and then Poseidon just kind of gives him a look <laughs> of like, no, <laughs> don't say that, um, and now we look at it here, and we're like, oh yeah, that is his plan, and that is, I mean, he seems to be doing it, um, that seems to be like the big thing we're building up to is Kronos coming back and having to fight the gods, um, which is bad because the last time they mentioned this a couple times, I think already the only time they were able, uh, the gods were able to beat Kronos is by tricking him. So him coming back and being like, I know your tricks. If Kronos comes back, I don't know that the gods can be him. Um, but we'll see, you know, a lot of, lot of book left, a lot of books left as well. Um, I mean, I don't know. Why can't they just, like, could they just, like, steal the coffin and destroy it or something? Is it is it that simple? Um, 
Is there more that Hades could be doing? Seeming Tartarus is in is in uh, the underworld. What is Hades doing in all this? What are what are the gods doing right now? You know. Uh, but yeah, there's that. Um, and then we have. I guess just kind of. I guess my last couple of things are very Annabeth focused. Um, yeah. First one, it's just a small thing. Uh, you know, they did find Annabeth and Luke and, and Thalia's, uh, one of their old hideouts, which I just really like this moment because it kind of builds the world out more, sort of builds up, uh, Annabeth's history more, which, you know, I always like learning about, you know, cause like Percy, we sort of already know his stuff, but with Grover and Annabeth, they're not the main characters, and so whenever we do learn about more about just like them themselves or their past or whatever, it's always very interesting to me. Um, you know, I, I think especially with Annabeth's because hers is so uh, intrinsically tied to Camp Half Blood, um, and then obviously this like huge event with with uh, you know with with Dahlia, and then that obviously spun out to them being like, hey, no more kids, you know, with the big three, so, it was very interesting, and also, um, Percy, you know, you know, them being very different when it comes to them, uh, coming into the half-blood world, right, where you have Percy, very new, right, um, didn't know about really any of this stuff growing up, and he just kind of gets thrown into it, where, Annabeth had to come in at a very young age, uh, very tragic, uh, but then because of that, she has a lot of knowledge and a lot of preparation for any sort of demigod stuff to happen, so her story is very interesting to me, um, so then for, enough, for them to find a hideout, it, it just, small details like that fleshes it out, and you're like, oh, right, they were, like, on the run for a while, like, a long time, you know, like, she didn't live in New York, <laughs> Percy lived in New York, so his travel to Half-Blood Hill, not a whole lot, not a, not very far, her travel was, like, I forget what they said, wasn't it, like, 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 weeks or months, like, they, like, they were, like, running across the country to get to Half-Blood Hill, like, that's crazy, I couldn't even imagine, that. so, like, that just kind of reminds me and kind of puts it back into perspective, where it's, like, her life was awful, <laughs> you know, like, like, Percy's was bad too, obviously, but they were, they were very different, um, yeah, for having to be on, and again, so young too, you know, oh, it's, it's awful, um, and then on top of that, the other thing I wanted to mention was the whole, the whole Thalia thing, um, it mentions a couple of things about it, but, um, Cyclops, right, like, that's the big, big, uh, big boss of this book, it seems like, and them having Tyson complicates things, um, her really not liking Cyclops, obviously Cyclops have this stigma against them, but Annabeth seems to have a little bit more than just that, um, and she almost talks about it, this happens a few times, uh, in the first book and in this book so far, where Annabeth almost gives more information about her past, and she gets cut short, and that happens because I think the, the 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 Hydra comes or something. But it seems like she was about to talk about something happened with them in a Cyclops. You know, it's like that's why she doesn't trust them. That's why she hates this whole sort of thing. You know, you know that's why she doesn't. She want to bring Tyson along, not not just because of the, the like general uh, attitude that that mortals. Well, I guess not mortals, but. Um, demigods or whatever have towards Cyclops. Um, some something happened, and, and maybe it wasn't Dahlia. I don't know if that was spoken explicitly, but it was at least with her, like some sort of experience, where it it almost sounds like she was gonna say that they maybe like befriended a Cyclops, and it it like betrayed them. Either it went to kill them or it went to to someone else that was gonna hunt after them or something. I don't know pretended to be their friend, you know, so I think that's why she's very, 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 uh, wary to trust Tyson, because she's like, ah, but he could, he could turn on us at any point, you don't understand, I've been through this before, that's the kind of energy that, that, that she was bringing with that, but 
she didn't actually say anything, anything explicit, you know. So, uh, well, we'll, you don't have to wait till the second half of the book because, again, we'll finish the book next week. So we'll know everything that happens after that. I'm sure we'll learn about whatever her past was in that in that regard. But, um, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, again, you know, going into the the latter half of this book, uh, we already talked about the whole, like, Cleary stuff, which are probably will, not probably, will get addressed in the next chapter, because I can't imagine what else, what else would happen, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, and then just getting to the Sea of Monsters, like, I mean, they have to do it, I have to imagine that we're gonna have, like, one big last battle with, uh, you know, with the Cyclops there, saving Grover, all that stuff, um, because I just can't imagine that we finish this book and they, they fail, they don't get the golden fleece, the tree dies, Camp Half-Blood maybe just stops existing. I mean, that would be huge for them to do that. And then what, like, does it still exist and now they're just, like, fighting for their life every day? Or do they all kind of scatter to, like, different parts of the state, different parts of the country? Like, that would be, that'd be kind of insane. Um, seems like a little too much. Uh, but I don't, I also don't want to say that they just, like, super easily beat the cyclops and get the fleas because that also seems too easy you know um but yeah that's the book or that not, not the book chapters one through ten of the book next time like i said we are going to cover the rest chapters 11 through 20 and uh yeah excited to get through it excited to see what happens with all of them um i guess that's it yeah you know, till next time, read those chapters. Let's finish Sea of Monsters, make our way through the series, and uh, have a good time.